Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to the 18th annual California Free Thought Day. I want to start off by um, giving a, a quick thank you to our $1,000 sponsors and donors. Um, thank you to Applied Office On-Site Computer Training, Ken Nahijian, um, are also our 485 and up sponsors and donors, Robert Nicholson, Paul Story, and Jamie Snyder. Um, also a thank you to our bronze and program sponsors, the Military Association for Atheists and Freethinkers, thank you for your service, the Humanist Association of Greater Sacramento Area, the Atheist Community of San Jose, the Reason Center and Maya Fultron, Compassionate Humanists, the Black Humanists and Non-Believers of Sacramento, Angela Garvey, Healthcare for All Sacramento, Atheists and Other Freethinkers, Sunday Assembly Sacramento, and lastly, Americans United for the Separation of Church and State. I also want to give a thank you to all of our many other donors, guests, speakers, volunteers, entertainers, who helped make today possible, including champions and advocates, Joseph Morrow, Kellen Orkut, Tom and Wendy Inkelman, David Noel, Kimba Lambert, Robert Pochelle, Carol Velarde, Wayne Ogar, Alexis Record, Nancy Sneed, Michael Nudo, David Herbert, Steve Campbell, Carol, Ka Carol Capper, and um, William Scharf. So how about a round of applause for all those volunteers and organizations who helped make today possible. Thank you. So we all had a great time at last night's fundraiser reception and we want to thank you all for being a part of that event. And of course, thank you to the Holiday Inn for being such a great host and venue for, for, to, for us to host. I also wanted to say thank you to the state of California for today's venue and of course the CHP for protecting us all today. Thank you. Um, if anybody tweets or use Instagram, we wanted to encourage you all to use the hashtag FreeThoughtDay um, to send posts, videos, pictures, um, especially sharing it for everybody who couldn't be here today. And be sure to, to like our page on Facebook and check in there. Um, if you want to do it right now, go ahead. <laughs> um, invite your friends to still join on in. We have a long day, a wonderful long day ahead of us, so it would be great to see more people. Um, don't forget to also visit the community tables. Um, you can also win by doing three easy steps. Just complete the survey in your program, collect eight stickers from um, the participating booths and tables, and then you're going to want to go on to the registration table and just turn those in. Um, there's three gift baskets filled with over $300 in books and goodies, so good luck to you all. And if you don't already have a program, just head to the registration canopy and um, get yourself one. And finally, I wanted to remind everybody of our code and conduct and privacy policies, um, which you might find in your program. We want here, um, everyone here to feel safe and welcome. So if you have any questions or concerns, just go ahead and ask one of the volunteers um, or a committee member. Thank you, whoa. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Um, excuse me, all right. Uh, I wanna thank all of you as well for being here today, and especially I wanna thank our MC. Uh, I, um, excuse me, I, uh, <laughs> I first met you in San Diego and was immediately impressed just by how much of an activist she was uh, working with at the time, Debbie Allen and some of the other wonderful people that are down there. Uh, she is, has been doing this for like since 2009, right around the same point that I got into the movement. Uh, she's a secular celebrant. Uh, she's the community outreach organizer of the Humanist Association of San Diego. Uh, and she's also the 2014 Humanist of the Year uh, from the Secular Conference uh, down in Southern California. She's an advocate for Latino issues and the homeless. I'm so happy to have here. Thank you so much. A round of applause for our MC. So our theme today is to think again. And I know none of us have ever been wrong before, right? Especially when we're on Facebook. In fact, how many of you, just like me, spend your entire free time on Facebook correcting everyone else that's wrong? Is it, it's not just me, is it? Alexis, I see some hands going up, right? And yeah, I know you do. I've seen your posts. So, in the, in the spirit of thinking again, I'm not talking about the small stuff, right? I'm not talking about what Netflix movies are good, or should we have pineapple on pizza? I, I, I'm not even the medium stuff either. I'm talking about the big, significant, life-impacting things 
for you and those around you, those kinds of things that you've been told your entire life, right? The stuff that you grew up with, the stuff that you practiced, the stuff that you repeated, the stuff that you lived by. Hell, maybe some of you even preached it, right? And no, I'm not just talking about religion. I'm talking about climate change. I'm talking about LGBT rights. I'm talking about people that are experiencing homelessness, immigration, all these kinds of issues that maybe at one point we thought one way and now we think another way. And so like I said, our theme is to think again. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of personal background on me. Uh, you know, for the last decade, maybe 20 years, um, I admit I am, I am a radical leftist, but I wasn't always. Now I've never been religious, I don't have that background, but there was a time when I was a teenager and I thought socialism was ridiculous and I thought that if a homeless person was homeless it was because they didn't want a home. That was me as a teenager and that's just the way that I was brought up, not necessarily by my parents but the people around me and I've changed since then. When I was an adult, when I was in my early 20s, I thought feminism was a joke. All those angry women, right? Now I've learned that that's not the case. but. Here's the point about thinking again. When we're on our social media and we're chatting with other people especially, we have a tendency to hold our view and then dig in our heels and never change that view. In fact, when someone challenges us, we have a tendency to dig in even further. Even when the other person is giving us information that might actually be helpful, to contrary to our beliefs, we don't want to hear it. And I think the same goes for when we're arguing with them as well. When I see somebody out there that's an anti-vaxxer, I jump on them, but you know what? They were probably like me 10 years ago about one of those other issues, and now they're digging in their heels. And so here's why I want to think about thinking again. The more we own this idea, the harder it is to change. But if we embrace the change that we've done ourselves, like my issues on the homeless and socialism, my issues on feminism. And the more we can tell other people that we've had a change in our heart or in the way that we think, the more we can celebrate our mistakes and be an example to other people, maybe we can encourage them to think again about their issues. In other words, don't come at them as an enemy, come at them as an ally in a sense that says, hey, you know what? I have once been wrong about some of the issues. I've changed my mind about these. And the more we can celebrate changing our minds, the more we might encourage other people that they don't have to dig in their heels as much. Maybe they can open up a little bit and realize that it's okay for people to think again. But I do draw the line. There is no such thing as pineapple on pizza. It should not exist. 